All right, all right, think about just how crazy this sounds as a Baltimore Ravens fan. It's week 15, and literally everybody on the roster was at practice yesterday. Everybody. Nobody missed practice. Now, I know it is changed. It is altered a little bit because there's some people on injury reserve. There's some people on the NFI and whatnot. But even still, to, to have literally every single body that's on your active roster at practice at week 15 as a Baltimore Ravens fan, especially what we've been through the past couple of years, we deserve this. But that is wild. Now, get this. On top of all that, on top of everybody being there at practice, somebody who didn't miss a practice yet after being hurt last week, after being declared with a grade one MCL spring, Kyle Hamilton was part of that Ravens practice yesterday. So he was there. He was there. Kyle Hamilton, who we were all been having conversations about, oh, is he going to miss this game and be ready for the next one? Is he, he going to be ready for, ready for the playoffs? Or when is he going to come back? We don't know. Kyle Hamilton was out there practicing. So this dude with his injury, where he left the game twice from, he was out there. It's wild, man. And it just continues to really seem like everything is lining up for the Baltimore Ravens to take it all this year, man. It just makes too much sense that the Rave that this is their year for real, man. This t they they something special. They really are special. And, and we ain't been able to say that the past couple of seasons like we can say it this year, especially this time at this point of the year. Remember that. Remember this, especially moving forward, man. Now, we got a lot more crazy stuff to talk about, but before you get into it, Team Keep It Clean, make sure you subscribe to the channel and, and turn your notifications on. We want to keep growing. We want Team Keep It Clean to become even bigger, stronger, more fun, have more parties, especially for the live streams and stuff, so we enjoy ourselves on here. I hope y'all are enjoying yourselves, too. I always appreciate hearing back from y'all in the comment section, and also, make sure you leave a like on the video, too, because when you leave a like on the video, it helps out the channel a ton now um think about this too as a, again as a baltimore raven fan these past couple of years they've been trying on us they don't weigh heavy on us but think about this going into week 15 the baltimore ravens have scenarios where they could clinch a playoff spot this early <laughs> <He's> like <laughs> Like that, that's big, man. That is big. The Baltimore Ravens have several, not just one, not just, they have a bunch of scenarios, and we can't even list them all. They have a bunch of scenarios where they could clinch a playoff spot this weekend. Let's read some of them. So it says, um, Baltimore, with the, they could clinch a playoff spot with a win and a Denver loss or tie and a Buffalo loss or tie. Or with a win and a Denver loss or tie or a Cleveland loss or tie. Or. With a win and a Denver loss of tie and a Pitt loss of tie. Or with a win and a Denver loss of tie and a Houston loss of tie. Or with a win and a Buffalo loss of tie or Cleveland loss of tie. Uh, with a win or a Buffalo loss of tie and Pitt losing or tying. With a win and a Buffalo loss of tie or Houston loss of tie. And with a win and Cleveland losing or tying and Indy losing or tie or Pitt and Indy tying. Or with a win and Houston losing a tie and Pitt and Indy ending in a tie. And then it says, note, several additional scenarios involving a Baltimore tie and a combination of other teams losing or tying would also clinch a Ravens playoff berth. So we couldn't even get every scenario. We didn't even list every scenario. That's, that's crazy, man. That is, that is insane, man. That makes, like, not that it doesn't make sense, but for us, especially what we've been through the past couple of years, that's crazy. That's crazy, the fact that we can say that right here, right now. Now, of course, the Baltimore Ravens, they still got to take care of their own business. But the fact that we can have this conversation, there's a lot of conversation that we've been having this year that we couldn't have over the past couple years, especially at this point. <laughs> this is wild, man, but I love it, man. I love it. Ravens got a big game coming up uh, this Sunday night against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and Trevor Lawrence will be uh, the quarterback. Of course, he didn't even miss a game. They said this boy ain't missed a game even through high school, man. This dude don't miss time at all. He put a high ankle sprain. He ain't missed no time. He almost came back against the Browns the other week. But 
ended up coming up just short. Now, um, with this game, we've been having a lot of conversation. I know the, a big part of the conversation has been Kyle Hamilton. We should rest him this week, but have him ready for them San Francisco 49ers. Now, um, I am a fan of resting him this week, even though he did practice yesterday. So I would assume that he'll practice over the next couple of days. I, I think I can still see the Ravens, Marlon Humphrey in this thing, like they did before the Chargers game, because Marlon Humphrey, he had an injury, but heading up into the Chargers game, he was practicing. He was practicing. But they held him out of that game. He did not play in that game. They were like, ah, no, you, you can sit this game. You'll miss it. And, hey, it just so happened to be Sunday Night Football. So now, a couple weeks later, Sunday Night Football, I, I think they'll do the same thing. With Kyle Hamilton But I know I know a lot of Ravens fans Have been like Oh he can um, And I said to myself too Let him be ready For that 49ers game Let him be ready for, To go against San Francisco But then when you think about it This Jaguars game Is far 20 million more times More important Than that San Francisco game Because Jaguars Are in the AFC The game against the Miami Dolphins That's far more important Than the San Francisco 49ers game Because Dolphins Are in the AFC the Steelers game, that's far more important than the San Francisco 49ers game because the Steelers are in the AFC. So you get where I'm going with this. The AFC games, they weigh heavily. Now, I know we want to see the best Baltimore Ravens team against them San Francisco 49ers because they are one of the best in the NFC. And that's going to be a hoo-hoo-hoo. That's, that's going to be a game. But that is just something to keep in mind. Uh, now, um, it is always nice to get the background uh, story on some different plays that we see from the game. One of those plays being the uh, touchdown to Odell Beckham Jr. Now, I remember live doing, live, doing a live stream, uh, especially because Lamar, he had missed some deep passes early on. And with the, uh, the OBJ touchdown catch, people were like, oh man, Lamar Jackson, he threw it short. He threw it short, he threw the ball too short. I didn't really think he threw it short, but people saying he threw it short. Odell had to slow down for it, da, da, da. okay, cool. But what we didn't know, especially watching it live and what we came back to around to know, and Odell Beckham Jr. said, Lamar Jackson said, hey, nice play. But Odell Beckham Jr., he ran the wrong route. He ran the wrong route. So it's like for them to still be able to make a touchdown happen on the wrong route, that's a beautiful thing. Now, I remember um, there was a Dolphins game from – not <laughs> definitely not this past week against the Titans. It was two weeks ago, or maybe three, where it was a ball that Tua threw to Tyreek, and people were saying, "Oh my goodness, what a bad ball by Tua!" Tua uh, Tyreek really made a great adjustment on that ball because it was a bad throw from Tua. It was a touchdown, but and it was a nice play, but people were saying it was a bad throw from Tua. But then came to the realization that the Tyreek said it. He said, "Oh, that wasn't a bad ball. I actually ran the wrong route." So it's nice to just see that background uh, when it comes to stuff like that because we don't always know the full story. Well, I mean, we see stuff live and we assume this and that and the third, and, and I do the same thing, but it's nice to see that background. Now, speaking of Odell Beckham Jr., man, Odell Beckham Jr., um, it was questioned when he signed this 15 mil, well, 18 million overall deal, but 15 mil guaranteed with 3 mil in incentives. And now, <laughs> the way that he's going, he's trying to get them incentives, man. Uh, he... With the touchdowns, he may get it because of, remember his incentives uh, were for leading the team in yards, leading the team in reception, leading the team in touchdowns. So he gets a meal for each of those categories. Um, but his 15 mil, that that value, and I know that's high price, but Ravens are really starting to they're really getting their money's worth. Now I, I know um, you don't pay somebody 15 mil just for leadership, just for bringing people together, but. That is a big part of Odell Beckham Jr. The way that um that's that's something that's priceless leadership. It, it, it really is. But the fact that he is providing leadership, <coughs> excuse me, but also uh, improving statistically as well as the season goes along, you can't ask for anything better. But the way that Odell Beckham Jr. the way that he brings this Baltimore Ravens team together, um, similar to a Mark Ingram, um, because Mark Ingram we remember like he was the one. Big trust. He started that. He started that. And Ravens, they, they, they still say it every now and then, but Mark Ingram was the originator. So for him, and, and that's obviously stuck with a lot of Ravens fans and a lot of Ravens people and whatnot, but he's not even on the team anymore. 
So that's how you can tell that he has such a big impact on this team. But now with Odell Beckham Jr., they're looking to take that same Mark Ingram impact but multiply it by even more. And and then hopefully they multiply it all the way to a Super Bowl. So Odell Beckham Jr., he's been very, very special. And again, we talk about just the way that he not has only, not has only embraced the team of the Ravens but really embraced the city of Baltimore as well. Uh, like so some people may see it as a small thing with Odell Beckham Jr. when he scored a touchdown, and he do like the the, the park high struggles strut or something like that, or he did the the bird flu too. But it's like no 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 that's him. Like he really took the time to study, and we know Odell Beckham Jr. could do any dance in the world, but he really took the time to study. Like okay, what's Baltimore all about? What what, what, what does Baltimore mean? What, what what is that city about? What what are some of the things that they not only like but what what do they love? So the fact that Odell Beckham Jr. took the time to learn those, so he was like, you know what, hey, when I'm scoring, when I score, when I'm at the highest point that I can be in a game, when our team brings it together and makes a great play and I get a touchdown, oh, yeah, I'm putting on for the city, man. So shout out to Odell Beckham Jr. for that because that says a whole lot about him. Now, <clears throat> Malik Cunningham, uh, he took part in his first practice. And Malik Cunningham, he will be wearing the number 12, by the way. So, um, Harb said that they'll work him at wide receiver, and they'll work him at special teams a bit, too. They said it's a, a move, though, more so for the future. Excuse me. <coughs> but with Malik Cunningham, we knew that with this signing, it wasn't going to be, like, no big impact right here, right now. Again, because Tyler Huntley getting ready to be a free agent. No, no more exclusive rights free agent. No, no, no. Straight up free agent. So Tyler Huntley, it's like the Ravens are preparing, like, because again, these backup quarterbacks this year for, for sure show that you, you gotta stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready. You, you gotta have your backup quarterback situation right. You gotta have it right. So Tyler Huntley, go get your bread. You'll be able to make more bread with somebody else than he will with the Baltimore Ravens. Go get your bread, man. And I hope that he gets an opportunity. We'll see. Cause again, there's still a possibility that he could come back to the Ravens, but I just I don't think it's gonna happen. That's just my opinion though. But the Ravens are preparing for everything. So very smart of them. Now, I thought that this was very special uh, from Malik Cunningham. Uh, or just a report about Malik Cunningham because it came from Mike Rice. Uh, he said, Mike Rice, I mean, excuse me. He said the reason uh, Cunningham joined the Ravens. He said Bill Belichick says the Patriots attempted to keep Malik Cunningham. Uh, but the Ravens, they sold Cunningham on the opportunity with their offense as a quarterback. And Lamar Jackson's presence. You see that? You, you see how important respect is? And not saying that the Patriots didn't necessarily disrespect it, Malik Cunningham, because he can do so many things. But to be viewed as what you want to be, that says a lot. Because Baltimore Ravens are familiar with that. We see Lamar Jackson. He ain't want to be no wide receiver. Teams want to be a wide receiver. Teams wanted to be a running back. He said, no, I don't want to be those things. That's why he didn't run the 40 at his pro day. He said, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not running the 40. His mom, smart, smart. Shout out to Miss Felicia. She said, no, you, no, you're not running the 40. Because she didn't want teams to try to label him, to try to put him in a category that he didn't want to be placed in. He wanted to be a quarterback. He said, quarterback or nothing. And this obviously worked out for him. But with Malik Cunningham, that like to me, that says respect. That says respect. I mean, now they did say John Howard, they're they trying him out at wide receiver, special teams, stuff like that. But <clears throat> he wants for for long term, I guess they're just trying to find a place for now. But for long term, he wants to be a quarterback. And it makes sense. So he's in the right situation to do it. And that's, that says a lot. Now, um, Tylen Wallace, after his wonderful punt return for a touchdown, he was named the AFC Special Teams Player of the Week. So shout out to Tylen Wallace really making his mark uh, in the NFL. We happy for Tylen Wallace, man. It, it just that that was just crazy. And again, I do expect him for that to be his job moving forward as a return man or on punt return. I think on kick return it'll be Justice Hill, but on punt return, Tylen Wallace all day. Now, um, Devin Duvernay, John Harbaugh did say that they expect Devin Duvernay to be back for the playoffs, and this is more of a uh, I guess call it a rehab thing because he said it ain't gonna be no surgery or anything like that. Uh, so Devin Duvernay just going to be resting. John Harbaugh said he expects him back for the playoffs. So, hey, we'll see. We'll see. 
So he would obviously be uh, on special teams and whatnot. Maybe get some stuff here and there on offense and whatnot. Now, um, and I remember uh, during the game, <clears throat> and I was surprised too when I saw that number sixteen out there on offense. I said, "Whoa, okay, Tyler." That boy Tyler was out there on offense this past game. So, yeah. Now, um, Pro Bowl. Even though, like, look, Pro Bowl voting is cool. It's great, and. That can go on these guys' resumes as, hey, I made it to the Pro Bowl. I'm a pro bowler. And that is a beautiful thing. That's a special thing because that talks about the respect that you have amongst fans and amongst your peers at your job. Um, but we worried about a different bowl. Baltimore Ravens, I, I don't expect them to be playing in the Pro Bowl this year. I, I, I really don't. Um, but they are still getting voted for the Pro Bowl. Now, the offense, uh, Lamar Jackson is fourth in voting on the Pro Bowl. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum, Linda Flinder. He's second in voting. Kevin Zyla is first. And I think this would actually be his first Pro Bowl. But, again, no Pro Bowl for Kevin Zyla. So, you may get voted to your first one, but you ain't going to be playing in your first one, my friend. But, anyway, uh, and Pat Ricard is second in voting. Now, do they don't do AFC, NFC anymore, do they? I, I don't think they do. I think they just do overall voting, I believe. Um, so, I would assume if Pat Ricard is the second fullback, then maybe it's Kyle Juszczyk that's the first because uh, I know not, not many teams have fullbacks anyways. I like he might be second and voting overall for fullbacks, but it's like it's like three fullbacks out there. But anyway, uh defense. Roquan Smith is the first inside linebacker. Uh Justin Matabike uh is the first uh defensive tackle. Uh Jadavian Clowney is number six six at DN. <laughs> Shout out to hashtag JC24. Uh Kyle Hamilton is the first at strong safety and Geno Stone still. Even though like he, we ain't been hearing his name like that, he is first in Pro Bowl voting at free safety. Now, if they would only play him in free safety, then he could get back on track. But it is what it is. Uh, and then special teams, Justin Tucker is second. Um, and Jordan Stout is seventh. Uh, Tyler Ott, the long snapper, he is third. And the return man, Devin Duvernay, he's third as well. But, I mean, don't let, let Tyler mess around. Hey, let, let, him, let him mess around and get some more punt returns. Hey, Tyler, Tyler, hey, Tyler go for it, man. Let him mess around and get some more punt returns in. He might be added to that Pro Bowl list as well. But, again, we expect the Baltimore Ravens to be talking about a different bowl uh, come that time of the year.